Well, good morning. It's Gordon Hickson again, Rachel's husband. And I'm really excited to be talking to you today. I hope some of you listened to Rachel yesterday talking on Easter Sunday and just talked about incredible passion of our God and just the love of Jesus. He loves us so much with longing. You know, every time he is looking for us to love us and seek us out. And I'm going to be talking today about how Jesus is seeking out people in every part of the world. And particularly, I want to talk to you about one of my passions, which is about Muslim people. You may not know, but my background is as a child, I grew up for a while in South Yemen, which was Aden. And I came to just be so at home with these precious people. And then when I was in business, I worked in Saudi Arabia in the Gulf, and I just felt very much at home. Some people don't feel at home, but I just felt so at home. They were my friends, close friends. And so I just felt the love of God for them. And uh, a few years ago, I created a movement called Mahabba, which means love. Because I believe one of the greatest things we as Christians can do is learn to love our Muslim friends. I mean, they are precious, precious people. And God has a passion for them. So we're going to look today at the Muslim people in North America and Europe. And I want to take you on a journey of prayer because just on the 12th of April, we are starting a movement called Ramadan. Now, Ramadan is the Muslim time of prayer and fasting. Now, millions around the world will be praying and fasting for 30 days. They'll be seeking God. And on the 27th night, many of them stay up and they pray for an encounter with God himself. They pray for visions and dreams. And so it's a, very, it's a very intense time. It's a real time of people developing a hunger for God. And many people during that time do have an encounter with Jesus. So we're going to be praying along with them. A lot of my material comes from the 30 days of prayer. And I really do uh, encourage you to get online the 30 days of prayer for the Muslim world. Because there will be millions of Christians praying during that time for our precious friends. So Father... Will you help us today as we just talk and have this wonderful journey of going into the Muslim world? Will you just encourage us and just develop that love, break the fear in our hearts and let us love these precious people? Amen. So I'm going to start in North America. And statistically, in 2017, there were 3.45 million Muslims in America. I believe actually there's more. I've, I've actually read it's more like 7 million, but... That was a statistic then, which is about the same as we have, which is about three and a half million in the U U UK. But 65% of these are the Sunni Muslims. You know in, in Islam there are Sunni and there are the Shias. But the 65% are the, the main block of the Sunni. But there's no majority race. About a quarter of them are black, a quarter of them are white. And then the rest are, are either hi Hispanic or they're Asian, or they're Arabic, or they're mixed race. And so it's, it's, it's a real mixed bag of different people. But uh, there are some large population areas of Muslims, particularly in New York, and uh, also in a place called Dearborn. And I have friends of mine who work amongst these precious people in Dearborn. They've got great friends there, because it is a huge sector of people uh, that are from a Muslim um, uh, background, just living in one community. But also you probably know about the United States, that, the, that just as Christian faith came in with, with slaves in those early days, so also Islam came in with the black slaves. And so there was a, quite a strong Muslim movement amongst black slaves in the early days. And then about a hundred years ago, it developed into a more political movement, movement because they'd been treated really badly. And um, they developed a movement called the Nation of Islam. Now today it's not huge, it's only about twenty to 50,000 people, but actually it's very influential. You might have heard of the, a man called Farrakhan. Farrakhan was one of the, the great leaders of the Nation of Islam, but very, even though it's small, very influential. Particularly you see today, you know, with the Black Lives Matter, this is a political movement. But one thing you may not know is that in the prison system in America, many prisoners become Muslims because they, they're looking for an identity. And so we need to pray for these people. And I want you, us to pray today, particularly for the American church, because many of them do not understand 
the Muslim world. They, they are quite fearful of Muslims. So Father, we want to pray for these precious people there in the States. We just know that many of them are fearful. They're looking for an identity. They're looking for hope. They're looking for life. And Father, they're also looking for you. And I pray, Father, as they begin to connect with American Christians, they will see the love of Jesus and they will not be fearful. There will be a real sense of community cohesion and a real sense of opening their hearts to each other. We pray, particularly during Ramadan, that American Christians will be able to pray along with them, that they will have encounters with God and dreams and visions of God during this time. So we thank you for them in Jesus' precious name. Well, let's come to Europe, and I'm going to start in London as a bit of a window on, on Europe. Well, we've got about 1.5 million Muslims in London. That's about one in every six people in London is Muslim. Now, many of these Muslims are becoming more religious. Now, why should they become more religious? Well, it's largely because they've come into London, they uh, the, the second generation feel that their, their nation of their birth is a little bit backward. They feel that UK is too permissive. And so what do they do? They look for an identity. And so many of them look for the more, the more radical things. And they look for an, identical, an identity in radical Islam. Because it does give you that very significant brotherhood. And so that is what we're finding is that many of them become more religious and more fanatical. And that is why London has become a seedbed of, of some of the terrorist movements, which is really sad, because it's largely because we have not welcomed them, we've not loved them, we've not valued them. And so we've got to pray for these precious people, that they will find a, a home in Britain and find friendship. Now, also many of them have also abandoned Islam because of the, the terrorism that they see, because of some of the things that have happened in the Muslim world. I work a lot amongst the Iranians, and so many Iranians have had an encounter with Jesus. I, I know about 8,000 Iranians who've really come to a relationship with Jesus. It's now many of the Kurds, it's now beginning to be in England, some of the, the Arabs and Somalis are really finding the love of God in Jesus as they meet with Christian people. But we face a wonderful opportunity in London, as we have this great community of Muslims amongst us. And we let, let's just pray for them right now. Father, I want to thank you for these 1.5 million Muslims right there in our city, and in our many, many other cities, large uh, groups in, in Birmingham, in Manchester, in many other cities. We pray, Lord George, Lord God, during Ramadan, that they will have such a precious time of seeking you, seeking your face, and that they will find you during this time. They will have such an encounter with the living God. And I pray that as Christians begin to love them, they will also really begin to come into friendship with Christians and experience the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's move across then into Europe. Now in Europe, there are many new movements of Islam, uh, but some are, are not so healthy. We see in, in, in Eastern Europe, there's the Saudi Salafi um, strong influence. I mean, we have some of that here in Oxford and it can be, uh, uh, it, it, does, it doesn't really help them connect with their society. And Russia probably has the largest number of Muslims, about 20 million Muslims. And uh, we don't really hear about that, but in the, some, the southern belt of Russia, it's largely, largely Muslim. Many of these young people, many of the youths, are influenced largely by the internet. And they're looking for their identity, they're looking for roots, and they're turning to radicalisation. I've spent time in East London with, with some of the more radical ones, and I've had debates with them. You know, they're just, they're wanting to talk, they're wanting to debate, they're wanting to hear. And please open your hearts and be willing to, to talk and debate with them. I remember a few years ago having a time of debate with quite a number of them in a school in East London. And at the, I, I had about an hour to talk about my, my relationship with Jesus. I was debating with a man called Abdan Rashid. At the end of it, he just looked at me and said, that was awesome. They're looking 
to know the truth about Jesus. So let's not be fearful. Let's realize that they are God seekers just as we are God seekers. So there is that in Eastern Europe. Uh, there's also the growing Salafi movement in Moroccan, Moroccan diaspora, France, Spain, Italy, Holland and Belgium. But in terms of population, there are now over 5 million in Germany. France is about 5.7 million. We're probably 3.5, maybe 4 million. Then you have Italy, maybe over 2 million. Bulgaria, Spain, Holland, over 1 million. Then Greece and Belgium, six, seven hundred thousand, not large numbers. Austria, Switzerland, Sweden, it's even lower, about 450 to 475,000. But right now they are having to, Europe, having to accommodate another flood of two million migrant Muslims who flooded out during the difficult times, many of them are Syrians. And we need to pray for those ones so that, that they can get integrated and not get radicalized. I find that percentages are more influential than numbers. You see, by 2030, uh, in 10 of the European nations, they will have 10% of their nation which is, is, um, is Muslim. And they have to learn how to accommodate those precious people and learn how to, to relate to them. I do a lot of work in, in Norway. And in Oslo, 8% of Oslo go to a mosque every Friday. I mean... You've got to figure that that's quite significant. There are only about 150,000 Muslims in in uh, Norway. But, you know, percentage wise, this is quite big. Switzerland and Austria are also struggling with their 6% of Muslims. You might have heard of the race riots in South Sweden. I mean, they don't have that many Muslims there, but but there's real tension because the, the, the local Swedes are not learning to integrate with these precious people. So we need to really pray, oh God, help them. And so listen to me, hear me. We've got to face the facts, but not fuel the fear. We've got to find a friend. I'll say it again. We've got to face the facts, not fuel the fear. We've got to find a friend. So Father, we want to pray against the fear that is in Europe. The fear that stops people reaching out and loving precious Muslim people during this time. We pray for Sweden in particular, that in that southern Sweden belt, there will be a real opening of hearts and an integration, and a pe that people will begin to start loving their Muslim neighbour. And I pray for these precious Muslim people, that they too will have an encounter with the love of God. Now, as I come to a close, I wanted to say to you that Muslims are very, very... Uh, th th then it's not just a Muslim bloc, they're so different the average Muslim across Europe is only, th average age of Muslims is only 32. That's 10 years younger than the European age. And there's, as I said, there's a massive, massive amount of youth looking through the internet, many of them getting radicalized. Let's pray against gang mentality. But you've got the cool Muslims, the, the second and third generations. You've got the liberal Muslims who are trying to build bridges and find a common word with Christians. You've got the progressive Muslims who are humanist, trying to get human rights. You've got the atheists who've lost hope really in Islam. You've got the secular um, and the ex-Muslims who've denounced Islam. But then you've got the radical, the, the, so the radical Muslims who are trying to get back to the roots of Sharia law. And then the Sufi, the mystical ones, and then the traditional folk Muslims. There's so many different type of people. So come on. We have got to come to faith and love through prayer. We've got to realise that our Bible says, Ask of me and I will give you every people group. We've got to learn to do that through prayer. We've got to devote ourselves to prayer. So will you join us during the prayer, the 30 days of prayer, starting on the 12th of April, praying for the Muslim world? Ordinary Christians loving these precious treasures in that. So Father, we want to pray today for our precious friends, these Muslim people who are God-seekers. And we pray, Father, for such an incredible 
breaking of fear across the Christian world. We pray for an integration and an opening up of hearts that they will begin to have encounters with the love of God and also encounters with Jesus during this time. We pray during Ramadan, as they seek you, as they seek your face, face, that they will have dreams, they will have visions, and they will come to a real knowledge of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, God bless you. It's been wonderful to be with you, and I'll be with you again on Wednesday and Friday.